The human body is built to naturally maintain a healthy balance of acidity and alkalinity. The lungs and kidneys play a key role in this process, which I think is fascinating if you didn't know that. I mean, even if you've heard pH balance and you've heard about having that balance, your lungs and your kidneys play a key role in this process. Empowering you organically, delivering content you trust with results you love. Welcome everyone to another episode of Empowering You Organically. I am your host, Jonathan Hunsaker, and this is my co-host, Terry Intervenin. Hey everyone. So today we're gonna to talk about the pH balance in your body, whether it's more acidic or alkaline, and the importance of having a more alkaline body, and just some of the fruits, some of the vegetables, some of the foods that you can eat to help encourage your body to be in a more alkaline state. Yeah, so let's talk a little bit about what pH balance is. Your body's pH balance, also referred to as its acid-base balance, is the level of acid and bases in your blood at which your body functions best. So before we even dive a little further, one thing we talk about a lot on the podcast is every person's body is unique. I find it very interesting in this day and age that there are so many one-size-fits-all solutions, if you will, for health that a lot of people will push, when in reality, you can test things like your pH balance, you can test things in your blood, in your stool, in your gut, and it looks different for all of us. And I think it's really important when we're having this conversation, this is one of those aspects where like you can really dial this aspect of your body in, in ways you probably haven't thought of before. So you're going to learn a little bit more about that today. So let's continue on the pH balance. So the acid base balance, acids and bases in your blood at which your body functions best. The human body is built to naturally maintain a healthy balance of acidity and alkalinity. The lungs and kidneys play a key role in this process, which I think is fascinating if you didn't know that. I mean, even if you've heard pH balance and you've heard about having that balance, your lungs and your kidneys play a key role in this process. A normal blood pH level is 7.4 on a scale of 0 to 14, where 0 is the most acidic and 14 is the most basic. So let me say that again. A normal blood pH level is 7.4 on a scale of 0 to 14, where 0 is the most acidic and 14 is the most basic. So putting that in context, a normal level is 7.4. You really don't want to be all the way down here or all the way up here unless you're trying to achieve something and going one way or the other, which that's a whole conversation for a different day. But you want to mostly be at that normal state, that normal range. This value can vary slightly in either direction. And that, that comes into play in a lot of different things that you do with your health and that you put in your body and things like that. If the lungs or kidneys are malfunctioning, your blood's pH level can become imbalanced. Disruption in your acid-base balance can lead to medical conditions known as acidosis and alkalosis. Both conditions require treatment from a medical professional, not simply dietary changes. So we're going to talk a little bit later today about some things that you can use in your nutrition plan that help with a balanced pH and some of the benefits of those. But if you get too far one way or the other, and you face one of these conditions, the acidosis or the alkalosis, you have to seek medical treatment to get back into a normal balance. I mean, oftentimes that happens because we're out of balance to begin with. We've been eating a certain way for so long. We've had uh, a certain lifestyle, a certain exercise regimen or lack thereof that's caused us to go one way or the other. And, and I think it's interesting because you always hear about, you know, disease can't grow in the alkaline state. The more alkaline that you are, the better it is for your body. And it's, you know, as you look at the things that actually make you more acidic, it all makes sense, right? So if you have stress, tiredness, excess weight, fatigue, aches, pains, poor digestion, I mean, all of these things are a sign that you may be acidic. Your pH balance is a little bit more on the acidic side. And there's all kinds of things like 
um, more base waters, right? They're alkaline waters that are out there. You'll see those in the store and they're, uh, you know, 8.0 or 9.0 alkaline water. There's, there's companies out there like uh, Enagic and, and Kangen that make these alkalized machines you can hook up to help alkaline the water. And, and they, they put all kinds of claims with that. And I'm not going to say that it's, it's one way or the other. It's probably not as magical as they're saying it is. But there is benefit to alkalizing your body more and your blood and eating those foods that, in my opinion, they kind of calm the body down. That, that acid is, to me, more of a heat base, more of a hot energy, whereas if you alkalize it, it's more of a cooler, more of a calming. And that's what we're going to find in the vegetables that we talk about, the fruits that we talk about that help, excuse me, help make your body more alkaline. Yeah. And one other thing to talk about, let's get into the aspects of your body that this really impacts. So first and foremost, the cells inside the body are often affected by the pH level. At the cellular body or level in our body, the changes that happen, the things that can occur really matter a great deal. Um, and again, that's a whole conversation for a different day as well. But at the cellular level, we can do a lot of things to impact our body. pH level is also tied to the cells in our body. So really having a balance here matters. What's the role of pH in our everyday life when it comes to breaking it down for our body? So the first place is the digestive system. Um, hydrochloric acid is produced in the stomach and helps digestion of food without causing any harm to the stomach. If it gets too high, there's pain and irritation in the stomach. So having that balance helps you to have a healthy digestive system overall. The second one is acids cause tooth decay, which I know a lot of us would like to keep our teeth as long as possible. Sugar is degraded by bacteria in the mouth and acid is formed. When the pH is lower than 5.5, tooth enamel is corroded. Our saliva is slightly alkaline, so it helps neutralize some acid, which let's just stop and think about that for a minute. Our bodies are so amazing. The way that all the things work together, how your, your saliva can help neutralize some of that acid, like just amazing what our bodies do. But this concept of having this balance when it comes to the pH balance in your body even impacts something like your teeth and the decay of your teeth. So paying attention to you know, things that you can have in your nutrition plan that can help keep this in balance. Like I said, we're going to talk about that later. Super important. Well, I mean, it, it, it's why soda is so damaging Absolutely. to our teeth. It's so acidic. It's why, and we've all seen it since we were kids, you put the, the tarnished penny inside some Pepsi or Coca-Cola or something else, and it comes out shiny clean. Um, because, and so just imagine what that's doing to your teeth. Imagine what that's doing to your body as you ingest the sodas and things like that. Do you mean soda's not good for you? No. Oh, that's what all the marketing says. <laughs> Don't it, even get it, me started on a soda tangent. Don't even get me started on a soda tangent. We drink yeah. very minimal soda um, here at our house. There's just not only for your teeth, but so far beyond that. I mean, the comp the soda companies do such a good job of marketing soda. It's but I mean, cool. you can go to 7-Eleven and get a super big gulp, 64 ounces for like $1.99. Talk about quenching your thirst. I know, right? I know, right? It's a, it's a little sick, the right? The cheapest way to good health, right? You know what I love it is, um, <laughs> and, and I've seen this is at uh, KFC, Kentucky Fried Chicken, they have something at the drive through that says, um, upgrade your drink to 64 ounces and we'll donate a dollar to childhood diabetes, right? Like, what, what, are, what are we doing here? So if you upgrade your drink to 64 ounces of soda, they're going to donate to what's causing the childhood diabetes well, and, already. Um, I mean, and don't worry, I actually didn't go through the drive through I've just seen pictures of it. So that is not, uh, right, right, I don't right, think right, that's right, real right. chicken. Whatever, anyway, whatever but. you say. <laughs> okay, but honestly, don't, let me just say one more thing on this tangent. Those, like not just those drinks, but you can go to the gas station now and get those drinks that are like this big and this big around. And then you fill it up with soda. We're talking about tooth decay, bacteria and sugar coming together in your mouth. Like when they show the diagrams of how much sugar is in one of those big things, it's like, there's no question why we're where we are with health. What and gas station are you going to where they've got cups this big? You know, like, have you, I mean, I, I, I know they've got some big cups, but you know the ones I feel that like are it's like, a fish that you caught and it's eventually gotten this big. You know, big. like the big round ones that have <laughs> the big handles and they have the big straws coming out of them. They're a thing. You can all look them up. I promise they're out there and I see people drinking them. I'm like, 
that's like drinking a bag of sugar is really what it is. Like if you think about that in context, you would be like going to my pantry right now, getting out a big thing of sugar and sitting down and eating the whole thing. Like I'm just going to sit here and watch a show while I, like that's what drinking that big thing of soda is like. So we digress, but obviously we're pretty passionate about sugar <laughs> in our lives and soda. And it's a very, very minimal thing. Um, at our house, like it's a rare occasion that soda happens for like really special events. Number three, acid is produced in fatigued muscles. As what special <laughs> events do you have soda at? I'm, I'm sorry, I'm just curious. I mean, I understand if you need a little soda to mix with your rum, we didn't right? That makes this. sense. But I mean, <laughs> what special events call for soda? <laughs> I don't know. Like when, like when I take my kids to the movie, they're like, can we please have a soda? We never have soda. No. Can we just have a little soda? Now, like, now you want to make them sit for two hours and you want to give them a <laughs> cup full of sugar and, and, and that's going to be an easy experience? <laughs> Okay, well, I could I could give examples, but this will be a tangent we'll never get off of. So, Sorry about that. Number three, acid is produced in fatigued muscles. As a result of physical exercise, stiffness and pain in the muscles starts due to the formation of lactic acid. This reduces the oxygen supply in your muscle. And fatigued muscles, not something any of us want to have. I mean, we want to be functioning full capacity, feeling well all the time. Fatigued muscles just means a fatigued body. It means a lot more pain. Like it's that stiffness. There's just so much that goes into that. Um, so you want to make sure that you're supporting yourself. If you're fatiguing your muscles, first of all, if you're fatiguing your muscles and you're not doing things to like support that and to really help your muscles and your body recover, um, you're not, that, that's really tough on your body from a working out perspective. But overall, we need to be doing things to really support those fatigue muscles just day in and day out. We're using our bodies, we're moving, we really need to make sure we're replenishing that and, and really working on that. Absolutely. And I think it's one of the things that discourages a lot of people when they first start working out, first start lifting weights, is that pain that comes with. And it's like, I don't want to feel like this every time after I work out. Your body will build up a lactic acid threshold and you'll be able to handle more and more of it. And it's, it's actually a good thing. It's the same thing with stress. You're kind of stressing your body a little bit. So don't overdo it to where you can't move the next day. But over time, over the next week, two weeks, three weeks, four weeks, you have less and less of that pain, less and less of that lactic acid buildup and the pain that comes from it because your body does adjust to it. And that's a good thing. It helps your body deal with stress better because that's what working out is. You're, you're slightly stressing the body. And if you just increase it a little bit um, every day, every week, it allows your body to actually manage stress even better. Yeah. And there's actually a lot of, and, and this isn't the purpose of this particular podcast, but I will say that there are supplements out there to help with recovery after working out and um, to really help muscle recovery and other functions of your body. So um, maybe we'll do a podcast on that here in the near future, because um, I love to work out and I love to get that muscle fatigue in and lift weights. And there's a lot of natural supplements you can take that not only aid in that recovery um, and building up strong uh, muscles and things like that in your body, but also have other benefits as well. So maybe we'll talk about that in a future podcast. For, for those wondering, a branch chain amino acid sure. is phenomenal. Now, I know there's a lot of people say, hey, do BCAAs help muscle growth and all that? There's no studies that actually prove that, but there are studies that prove that branch chain amino acids can help the recovery of your muscles and the soreness of your muscles. So um, if you're just getting into working out, if you're finding that you're getting more sore and fatigued, uh, consider a branch chain amino acid drink or even capsule to take right after working out. That'll help. Yep, absolutely. So let's move on to something I'm excited to talk about, food. I love food so much. I'm a big foodie and uh, I love to cook. I love to go out to eat at really great restaurants. I like to eat local. I'm just, I just really enjoy food and what it means bringing people together and how it makes us feel, especially when we're eating in a way that helps us feel healthy overall. Interestingly enough, ingesting foods which are considered acidifying foods as dairy, processed sugar, meat, alcohol, coffee, overloads the ability of your body to neutralize all the acids. So as I just mentioned, food can be something that's really great can, and it can help us in our overall journey to health. But we have to be careful in what we're putting into our body. If you want to obtain a well-balanced pH, you must have a proper diet and nutrition. 
It is wise to follow a detox plan, which can greatly help the detox process. We just talked about this in a podcast a few weeks ago where you can do a daily gentle detox with the right herbs and right plants mixing them into a tea or into a supplement where you can get them into your nutrition plan that help aid in the detoxification of multiple organs in your body that help to detox all of the garbage out and help your body to stay healthy. Um, so that's one way that you can do that. A diet consisting of foods high in alkaline, proper supplementation, hydrating the body properly um, can aid in the, bo the body and detox as well. So there's a lot of things that you can do here to, um, keep yourself in that normal pH balance range that you want to be in. Well, I think that it's really an interesting point because we talk about detoxing daily. And yes, our bodies will naturally detox. And with how much toxins there are in the environment, we should do whatever we can to help support our bodies and just detoxing more efficiently. And I think one thing that people don't always consider is how detoxifying um, greens are and green vegetables are, and specifically green juices. Um, even our organic greens, our dehydrated green juice powder, consuming that on a daily basis, not only is it good for all the nutrients you get, but it's great as a daily detox. We do have a daily detox powder as well that's filled with, with some other greens and herbs that are made to detox, but even something like our organic greens, um, if you can't get your daily juice, is phenomenal for just that daily detox, and it yep. helps alkalize the body as well. Yep, absolutely. So let's talk about the good stuff. We're gonna talk about both veggies and fruits today. We're gonna to end with fruits, because I love fruits. I love veggies, but I love fruits even more. So we're gonna talk about veggies first and close out and save the best for last, in my opinion. Um, if you have a condition that requires you to watch the alkaline and acid levels of your food, then you'll be curious what are those alkaline veggies you can, you can add into your diet? So here's a few that you can add in. We have um, cauliflower, and we're gonna talk about a few things around each of these, but let me just list a few of them and we'll go back and touch on a few things. So we have cauliflower, we have radishes, we have lettuce, we have carrots, which I love, and celery. We were joking before we did the podcast, I would eat my celery with peanut butter. Which is acidic, so <laughs> don't do that. <laughs> Cancel it right out, but at least I was being honest. I like my <laughs> organic peanut butter with my celery, I just do. And then I'll drizzle a little honey on there while I'm at it. True story. Um, anyway, but there's a lot of benefits to these veggies that you can add in. Not only do we have these benefits from an alkaline perspective, but there's so many benefits to eating vegetables outside of that. So let's talk a little bit about, first of all, my favorite, carrots. Um, they have long been associated with the improvement of eyesight, and studies have shown that carrots can prevent some forms of muscular degeneration that are common as humans age. It's a high fiber vegetable, and it's got a starchy, fibrous body. It's high in pant pant let me say this the right way, pantothenic acid, folate, potassium, iron, copper, and manganese, and has excellent antioxidant properties, which we've talked about many times. I, you know, I love carrots. I love that my daughters love carrots, by the way. Um, when, when I'm trying to struggle to get them to get all the greens that they need, um, and although carrot is not green, I get it, um, I still consider it one of those vegetables that they need. They eat carrots at every dinner. Um, they also eat some sugar snap peas and, and snap peas and other green beans raw, um, things like that. So, which green beans is another very alkaline vegetable that I don't think we mentioned that's great. And by the way, we have notes on all of these vegetables. If you go to empoweringyouorganically.com and just check out our show notes, you will be able to see everything here. We're not going to go through all of it on this podcast. You may fall asleep um, by the time we get through and talking about all the benefits of each vegetable. Um, but we really just wanted to talk about the importance of having alkaline fruits and vegetables in your diet and just naming some of the big ones. Absolutely. Yeah. And green beans. I love green beans. And a lot of people don't realize like they'll go to the store and they'll buy a can of green beans. First of all, if you're going to buy a can of green beans from the store, then you want to be careful in what you select. You don't want the, the um, no salt added variety and you want to make sure you rinse them when you use them. But you can go over to the fruits and vegetables section of your grocery store, the produce section, and you can buy bags of green beans. And all you have to do is cut off little ends um, and you can eat them raw. Sometimes I just eat them raw. It's not everybody's favorite way to eat them. Or, you know, you can steam them with a little bit of water. It takes away some of those benefits um, when you steam vegetables. But it's better to eat that than to sit down and eat a bag of Twinkies, right? Um, I love green beans, and I prefer to get the fresh 
um, green beans that you can get in the produce section. And I think they're one of those veggies that a lot of people kind of look over, like, oh, I'll just get some cans of this or, oh, I, you know, they don't really think about that. But um, my girls and I love green beans. It's one thing that's like almost always in my fridge. They're really, really effective at reducing risks associated with heart disease. And they're also another great source of antioxidants, which we also know that we need. So yeah, so many amazing things about um, vegetables. We have all the minerals and vitamins that come along with them. Um, a lot of these vegetables that we're talking about when it comes to your pH balance and alkaline today, um, they help with liver function. They help with lowering your cholesterol. They help you with your eyesight. I mean, just so many things that we need in our nutrition plan and that we need to incorporate into what we eat so that we can have a healthy functioning body. Absolutely. One last thing just to touch on really briefly is just celery. Um, what's interesting about celery, it's so high in fiber, it actually requires more calories for you to break it down and digest it than is actually in the celery. So if you are watching your weight or you're looking for something to fill up on, um, you will actually lose weight by eating celery. Believe it or not, not 20. if you put the peanut butter. Not in. if you put the peanut butter and honey on it. Um, but and the other, you know, celery juice, it's it's becoming more and more popular. I, I get skeptical because a lot of people talk about new trends and new fads and these cure alls and they'll do all that kind of stuff. And it's not a cure all. It is healthy for you. Um, adding celery into your regular green juice or just having celery juice is good. It will help alkalize the body, um, but it's not the cure all that you see uh, posted all over the place. Absolutely. Let's wait. Are we going to get to your favorites? The fruits. The fruits. I love fruits. And let's talk a little bit about the fruit, the alkaline fruits to consider adding to your, I, I, I always, you'll always hear me kind of like go back and forth between diet and nutrition plan. I really try not to say diet because in my mind, diet is restrictive. It's like, this is how I'm eating right now. And I can tell you that over the course of my life, my nutrition has changed for what my body has needed, for where I've been with my fitness, for where I've been with my health. I've done, as I've realized I've had some food allergies, everything has changed. And I, that word diet to me just sounds so restrictive. So you always hear me conflicted when I say that. You always hear me say your nutrition, your nutrition plan, because nutrition to me speaks to fueling your body and loving your body and caring for your body. So I'm not perfect. I really try not to say diet, but it comes out sometimes. But I would much rather hear people talk about food as nutrition for your body, your nutrition plan, how you're choosing to eat, how you're fueling your body. I just like food is not to be restricted. It's to be used the right way to help your body be healthy. That's how I feel about it. So that's why you always hear me like I get so conflicted when I say the word diet. So I struggle with that big time. Okay, so coconut, papaya, bananas, avocado, grapefruit. I love, love, love grapefruit. Lemon. Which, which grapefruit's interesting because you think about it as being so acidic because it is citric. So true. But, it, but it's alkalizing. Alkalizing. Yeah. And lemons as well. Lemons is on the list as well. And again, you can get all these show notes um, on the episode page for this particular episode. But lemons as well. I love lemons. I love lemon flavor everything. Like I just... On the non-healthy side, um, lemon bars. I love lemon bars, but I love lemon in my water. I love lemon in recipes. I love squeezing lemon on fish, on salads. I love lemon flavor overall. Do you like lemon bars with your soda on your special occasions? <laughs> when I go to the movie theaters and have my <laughs> one soda a year. No, true story. Uh, no, true story. My kids drink soda only a handful of times a year, and I actually quit drinking soda overall when I was in junior high school because I saw how unhealthy it was and how it made me feel. You'll see me every once in a while drink like a special, a sip of a specialty soda, but I don't drink soda and I haven't for a long time. And I can tell you like, I am living proof. It makes a huge difference in your life. So let's go back. For I wonder a if people enjoy us picking on each other during the podcast. I'm not sure. I don't know if they prefer it to be more <laughs> serious and just get to the point or if we should just pick on each other the whole time. The whole time. You'll have to let us know in the comments um, or when you rate us on iTunes, if you're like, hey, stick to the points. We don't need to hear all the jibber jabber. Or <laughs> Stop talking. <laughs> Stop talking. Just being, get to the point. We're being humans and just yes. deliver the information. Exactly. Um, coconut. So it actually makes me really sad. I'm allergic to coconut, but it has so many benefits. Um, it fights oxidative stress. It's great for your immune system, um, antimicrobial properties. It improves the digestion of your food and coconut just tastes great. I miss being able to consume that on a regular basis. Like I once did, I think that coconut's an awesome one. 
I, I don't have anything to add on that. I love coconut. I loved when I lived in Panama, we would get the fresh uh, baby coconuts where you just cut the top right off and you drink the coconut water directly out. I mean, it hasn't even formed into the meat coconut yet. You know, they were just, we called them pipas. And so they were, it, it, they were just young coconuts. So delicious. So here's an interesting thought, and I've never even really put this together. But one time I had a friend tell me that pineapple in the United States was different than pineapple um, that she got like in, on the mainland for the United States was different than what she got in Hawaii. And she said that when she ate pineapple in Hawaii, she didn't get canker sores and all that weird stuff that can come from eating it in the United States. I wonder if people who are allergic to coconut, and I don't know, this is just a theory, if they had fresh coconut right off of you know, just right off, cut open, drink it and eat it that way. If there's actually an allergic reaction to it, it'd be really interesting to see if that's a variation for people when I, it comes I, to allergies. I find it interesting that there's so many, and this is just a slight tangent, that we have so many allergies now that we didn't have 50 years ago, 80 years ago, 100 years ago. Agreed. Is this coming because we are cleaning things so much like we're, we're actually cleaning and disinfecting and so it's getting rid of all of these things which is causing more allergies to go on we're over processing food we're over processing that coconut and cleaning it and washing it and putting this you know detergent on it and all of these other things that now you're allergic to it i mean i don't remember growing up ever having to be con concerned with if somebody was gluten intolerant or if somebody couldn't have peanuts at my birthday parties or things like that so it's yeah, but look at how we process gluten now. Like we could go on a whole tangent about this, but like look at how gluten impacts people. But one of the things that you should look at is like look at what we do to what we're the wheat that we use in breads now, processed bleach. But like it's not even a normal state that people. Well, the ancient grains in. wheat, I mean, used to be high in protein. That's why you, you can watch and read about how people would have a loaf of bread, and that was part of the meal, is because you got a lot of proteins yeah. in it. We we've changed the genetic makeup of wheat so much over the time that it, it's just, it's not what it used yeah. to be at it's, all. So I just think it's interesting if coconut fresh from somewhere where it's actually meant to be grown would be different than just eating coconut. It's just a theory I have. Be interesting to test it out. Okay, so next thing, avocado. I love avocados. I love them in guacamole. I love them on salads. I love them on sandwiches. I love them in everything. I absolutely love avocado. High in fiber and can help to lower your cholesterol. Has massive amounts of vitamins and minerals to help new, nourish your body as well. And it's healthy fat is approved in the majority of diets and can fill you up in between meals. So this is a fat that you want. Obviously, moderation in all things, but this is a very, very healthy fat to have in your nutrition plan. Yeah, and, and I'm going to go on one last little tangent, and we can, we can kind of end the podcast there. I do think that it's important to eat what's in season and to eat what's local as well. Um, I think the avocado industry, it, it's interesting how big it's gotten and how everybody's eating avocado everywhere. And, and there's documentaries out there that you can watch of the avocado industry, which may make you not want to eat as many avocados um, because of what they have to do and what they go through in order to get all of these avocados to fill everybody's desires. And I think that I think that we often indulge a little too much in some of the things that's like, oh, this is great. I need it all the time. I think that we would find ourselves in a healthier place if we ate what was in season and ate stuff that was local and ate stuff that, and not only is it better for the economy to buy locally from your local farmers and your farmer markets, but you're actually get stuff that is going to um, help you overall in the nutrient density. It's going to help you overall in fighting off allergies and things like that because these things are grown locally. And so it's like getting, eating local honey and all of that kind of stuff. I just, I just find, I think that it's much more important to eat locally and eat what's in season than just eating everything all year round and having it shipped halfway across the world to you. I don't think that that's quote unquote natural. Absolutely. In fact, we did a podcast um, with someone who's known lovingly as Amazon, John, John Easterling, where we talk about uh, plants and herbs from the Amazon rainforest. One of the things he talked about in that podcast was one of my favorite podcasts I have ever filmed. He goes there all the time and spends time with the indigenous people. And when he goes way back in there into the Amazon rainforest and he spends time with these people, they live long, healthy, disease-free lives because they're living off of what is in season, the plants and herbs, the fruits and vegetables that grow in that area of the Amazon rainforest, the, the indigenous people he spends time with um, for what's in season. 
And so it's this cycle of life that they live in there to survive and live. And they just don't have the emotional, mental, or physical um, things that we face in some of these more modernized countries where we're shipping all our food in and we're eating things year round that most people don't eat year round if they're living off the land. And so it's absolutely true. I mean, you see that just in that example alone, they're eating and living off of things in season. They're coming straight from the earth. They're not being changed. They're not being, you know, sprayed with herbicides and pesticides and they live long, healthy lives and they're like essentially disease free. Yep. So I, I mean, I think there's something to be said for that. And, and, and I'm, you know, again, for medicinal purposes, I, I don't think there's anything wrong with getting some herbs that come from other places around the world that may not grow locally for medicinal purposes, for healing purposes and things like that. Um, and I think you should shop at farmer's markets. I just think that that's uh, one of the best ways to support our economy, especially in the situation that we're in right now with coronavirus and COVID-19 and all of that. Um, encourage you to shop less on Amazon and more at your local mom and pop shops and farmers markets and keep the money in your local economy. I think it will make it just stronger for everyone. All right, side notes. We were talking about acidity and alkaline, your body, and now we're talking about other craziness. Tangents. Tangents. But yes, there's some fruits and vegetables that we just went through, and we'll have all of those with their benefits in the show notes. Um, if you, you know, if you're struggling with some of the things we talked about earlier that can be impacted in your body because of your pH balance. I, you know, you should consider having it tested and see where it's sitting. See if that's something that you're facing with your health that maybe you haven't thought about. This is something you can absolutely test. And I definitely think there's benefit to getting it in check and getting it balanced and can really pay off big when it comes to long-term health. Absolutely. Thank you, everybody, for listening. The show notes are at empoweringyouorganically.com. We talked about a couple products in here that Organics has. One is our Organic Greens. It is a great way to get that gentle detox every day and to get alkaline fruits and vegetables into your diet. Um, you can just mix it with water, ice water, mix it with a protein shake. Super easy and delicious. We don't add any sweeteners or stevia or anything like that. Just the good raw dehydrated juice powder. And we also have a daily detox powder that is also great. It is stronger than a tea, but gentle enough to use every single day. It won't have you chained to the bathroom if you use it. So check out those two products at organics.com. Um, go to iTunes, give us a uh, Subscribe, give us five stars if you like what we're doing here. Go to empoweringyouorganically.com for the show notes, resources, all of that fun stuff. And we will see you on the next episode. Thanks, everyone.